let's welcome Sergio Kanashiro Venatos, introducing part of the server team from Canonical. Thank you. Thank you for uh, attending the presentation. Um, so, before anything else, uh, so Lucas and I are Debian developers as well. Uh, Athos is a Debian maintainer, I think I can say that already, and applying for Debian developer in the near future. So, but we also work at Canonical for Ubuntu. Um, so, uh, I'd like to begin the presentation uh, talking about the relationship between Ubuntu and Debian. Uh, for those who don't know how that relationship works, um, basically most Ubuntu packages come from Debian, and I would say like 99%. Um, and so we rely a lot on Debian, of course. Uh, and some of the packages that come from Debian, uh, we have to make changes on top of them. So those changes, we call them deltas in Ubuntu, because they're, well, they're deltas compared to the Debian packages. Uh, those changes are either Ubuntu specific, which uh, in that case they cannot, or actually they could be submitted to Debian anyway, but it doesn't make sense. Oh, should I move? Okay, great. <laughs> um, it doesn't make sense uh, to have them submitted to Debian because they are specific to how Ubuntu works, uh, to how the packages in Ubuntu interact between them, themselves. And so in that case, we keep them as Ubuntu specific. Uh, but they can also be uh, non-specific to Ubuntu. In that case, we do submit them to Debian, or we try our best every time uh, as Ubuntu uh, developers and, and contributors, because in, at the end of the day, it's going to benefit both Debian and Ubuntu uh, having them you know, submitted to Debian and accepted in Debian. So, um, unlike in Debian, where we have like, well, in Debian we have the main uh, repository, but then we have uh, the contrib and the non-free repositories. Um, in Ubuntu, we have basically three types of repositories, the main, universe, and multiverse. So, the main repository is um, composed of packages that are basically supported by Canonical officially. So, if you use something from main, it means that uh, the canonical, the, the security team from the canonical and, and Ubuntu project, uh, they are taking care of the project, they are actively monitoring uh, security issues, patching projects uh, for all LTS releases of Ubuntu. Um, and everything else is either in universe, uh, so universe is basically everything that is still free software, but not in main. So not taken care by Canonical uh, actively. Uh, or Multiverse. So Multiverse is uh, Ubuntu's equivalent of uh, non-free. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, proprietary packages. So uh, we're not gonna talk about Multiverse uh, today because they're really like the last uh, part of our focus uh, as Ubuntu developers. Um, so we made this very beautiful uh, flow diagram which shows you how a Debian package gets into Ubuntu and how we decide whether like submit the changes or the changes we make to the Debian packages back to Debian or to keep it in Ubuntu. So basically, whenever there's, a, there's an upload um, for a Debian package in, in Debian Unstable, in this case, um, Launchpad, which is our, our forge, where we, uh, we do most of our work. So in, uh, so parenthesis, in Debian we have multiple tools to deal with multiple parts of the process of you know, packaging stuff. So we have the BTS, we have Salsa, uh, and like we have uh, the, the uh, Tracker. Uh, in Ubuntu everything is like together in a tool called Launchpad. So if you've ever used Ubuntu or filed a bug against an Ubuntu package, you've used Launchpad. So Launchpad has a script that decides, does this package have a delta? In this case, as I mentioned before, uh, a delta is a local modification to, that Ubuntu makes to a package. Uh, if the package has a delta, there's no straightforward way to merge it from Debian uh, in an automatic fashion. So in this case, Launchpad just doesn't touch the package. Uh, 
If there's no delta, there is what we call a sync. So Launchpad automatically brings the package into Ubuntu, and without any manual intervention, it builds the package in Ubuntu infrastructure, and it also releases the package into the, the proper uh, pockets. So either main or actually uh, release and uh, or proposed. Um, if there is a delta, as I said, so there's um, there's going to be a manual intervention, and that's what mm, our team does. Like uh, with they're going to talk about it later. So basically, we do what we call a merge, which we take the package in Ubuntu, we take a look at the delta that we're carrying, and then we apply that delta onto this new version of the package that was uploaded to that end. So we have to manually check that the delta applies correctly, that the delta is still needed, actually. Um, and. Uh, then we have to test everything, test the package and all. Um, and then we have to, part of the, this merge process uh, is reassess the delta. So we, have, we take a look at the delta and, and we ask ourselves, does it make sense to keep this delta Ubuntu specific or uh, can we perhaps, you know, with this new version of the Debian package, can we submit the delta to Ubuntu or to, to Debian and then get rid of it? Um, if if it's a generic delta and we can submit it to Debian, then that's what we do. Uh, that's, um, but by the way, I'm talking about our team. Uh, there are multiple teams in Canonical. They all have uh, their own workflows, but the server team does that. So if there's a generic delta that can, can be submitted to Debian, that's what we do. If the delta is Ubuntu specific, it doesn't make sense to have it in, De in Debian, then we just you know, keep it for that merge, for that version. Um, and then we upload, we upload the package to uh, Ubuntu and we close the cycle. Hopefully, uh, as I mentioned, just reiterating, the ideal scenario would be if we have a delta in the package, we submit that delta to Debian and then the package becomes a sync for the next uh, uh, package update in Debian. So the next time the package is updated, we don't have to touch it. Uh, Launchpad does all the magic for us. I think that's, uh, yeah, that's you. Yeah. Thank you, Sergio. Yeah, so now that Sergio explained how is the relationship with Debian, we'll talk a bit more about our team, what we do. Uh, so basically, we do maintain server-related packages in the Ubuntu server distribution. Uh, also, the installation image, uh, and we, we are part of this Ubuntu as a whole distro, like we have other teams working on desktop, uh, cloud images and so on. So we are focused uh, on these kind of things. We, as Sergio described our process, we try, we do our best to be good Debian citizens. So we, we try to forward all the changes that we apply to our packages to Debian. So we can reduce the delta, we reduce the burden of the maintenance in the, in the future. It's good for Debian and it's good for us as well because we will have less work in the future interactions. Uh, currently, we have four Debian developers in one Debian maintainer. Now, two, because Atos is applying for DM here during DevCon. So, uh, so most of our team, they know how Debian works and what should be forward or not to, to Debian. Uh, in general, I think we are doing a great work. We have some uh, good interactions with the Debian maintainers. Those are some technologies that we maintain, for instance, uh, PHP, uh, Apache, Docker, PHP, uh, Postgres, <laughs> QMU, uh, Ruby, and a bunch of other things. Those are things that uh, the server team takes care of. Yeah, so I'll just... Okay, so uh, what uh, does each of us do in the server team? So we are about nine uh, people working in the distro side of the server team, which wa is what we're talking about here. And we are mostly generalists, taking care of the set of packages that are related to server stuff. Uh, one of the things we do is bug triaging. Uh, we, as we usually assign one person per day to do that, and on your shift, you usually uh, look at all the bugs that were either filed or had any activity in the past 24 hours, and then you just keep pushing that bug towards resolution. For instance, you may check if that is a bug or not, 
and then you decide if you want to forward that bug to Debian or not, when it makes sense, or if we are go just going to provide a fix and after the fix lands, we decide if it makes sense to forward the fix to Debian, or maybe sometimes it's something specific to Ubuntu. Uh, we also merge packages from Debian when the package is not in sync with Debian, as Sergio just explained. Uh, and we help with the overall distro health. Uh, we call that plus one maintenance. Some, uh, we usually get someone assigned it for a whole week to do that. And what we do there is, uh, for instance, we take a look at the packages that are failing to migrate for some reason, and then we act upon those. Sometimes we do that just in Ubuntu, but sometimes we also do that going through Debian. Um, yep. So I myself, I'm currently taking care of uh, PHP stack, uh, which uh, is the interpreter and the, uh, the whole set of packages related to PHP in the archive. Uh, usually I'm talking a lot with Tafit to, to do that. We're currently doing the migration for some stuff there. <laughs> I also take care of PostgreSQL with Sergio, but to be honest, Mion does, thank you Mion. <laughs> Uh, he does such a great job here in Debian that there's barely any work left for us to do in Ubuntu. Uh, I also take care of some OCI images in the, in the Amazon ZCR and Docker Hub. Uh, we get Debian packages like uh, Bind9, Squid, Apache 2, and then we ship container Im Docker images in there. And currently taking care of Kia as well. Uh, the new DHCP server from ISC. Uh, Lucas takes care of container runtime stack, like Docker, container D, run C. He just had a talk about that earlier today. Uh, he also takes care of Ruby, both in Debian and in Ubuntu. So it's nice because then he can sync everything. It's, it goes smooth on our end because of that. And he also takes care of the HA stack, pacemaker, uh, everything related to cluster labs and some more stuff. And Sergio is in charge of OpenLDAP, uh, all the virtualization stack in there, Kimu, Livard, uh, and he also just, uh, like last cycle or one year ago, one year. he deployed the bug info D, thank you, uh, in, <laughs> in Ubuntu, so it makes our job easier there. And he also loves to do low-level two-chain stuff there. <laughs> I guess that's it. Uh, we have five minutes left for questions, so thank you. So guys, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and I'll go to you. No questions? Do have one here? What? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much um, for presentation. Uh, short question: uh, Are you maintaining the package uh, in Debian, or if you want, if you want, for example, to upload a new package, you need to coordinate it with the maintainer? Do you do it usually, or how it's working? Yeah. If it doesn't break something, it, we we. So we maintain the packages in Ubuntu officially, but uh, because we're uh, either dev and developers, maintainers, or active contributors, uh, it is not uncommon to have one of us also maintain the packages in Debian as well. Uh, we, I, I speak for myself, I, I don't speak for the team, but I try my best to judge like, and, and avoid any conflict of interest. Like I. There's a, a feature that you know I need for Canonical, but I'm maintaining the package in, in Debian. Then I go through another maintainer of the package so that I I'm not uh, you know just uh, taking a decision for Canonical in Debian. You know, it's a it, I mean it's a balance. Uh, for open all that, for example, which I maintain, I maintain it in Ubuntu, and for Debian, what we did the Debian maintainer and I reached an agreement where he still maintains the package that goes into the official Debian, Debian releases 
and I maintain open all that in experimental. So that never goes into the hands of users, like common users, but that's where I maintain the version of open all that, that I eventually sync from Ubuntu, from Debian into Ubuntu. That's, uh, that's what I do. I know that uh, Lucas uh, is also a DD, and uh, he's, uh, he also tries to you know, juggle between Debian and Ubuntu in that aspect. But I mean, if you want to talk more about that. <laughs> yeah, in, in this case, as Atos mentioned, for instance, Ruby, I do maintain it in Ubuntu and Debian, so usually there's no conflict of interest in general. It's like an interpreter. There's nothing much to do, but I do transitions in both distributions, so that works pretty well, but there are other packages, for instance, Docker, that I maintain in Ubuntu. I don't maintain in Debian. I tried to come here earlier today to present what I did to see what we can do in Debian to improve it. So we are trying, always trying to also make Debian better, even if our work diverges in some way uh, from what Debian does. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Cool. So, so please let's let us all thanks them for being here. Thank you. Thank you.